Let's go at top at 519. Uh, no, just regular welcome. Good morning, Cornerstone family. We're glad that you are joining us on this worship service. We are beginning our four-week series of Advent, Rediscovering Hope Today. And I hope that you uh, enjoy this series as we rediscover Christmas together. There's a couple of announcements we want to make. Uh, on the 6th and the 20th of December, we're going to have a special worship service for our tradition service at 9 a.m. outside. We're going to set up in this very blistery cool weather, and I hope you bring your own blanket and enjoy worshiping together as we come together outside with all the safety precautions and wearing masks that we'll be doing. Uh, this represents the first week of Advent, and I hope that uh, you enjoy uh, our series as we uh, rediscover Christmas in the next four weeks. I want to especially remind you that uh, uh, giving is online. You can find ways of giving through, the, through our website at www.cornerstonehome.org. And I want to start us with our Advent reading. The first candle of Advent represents the hope of people that felt in their hearts for the promised Messiah to lead them out of darkness in the very hard times that they were in. Matthew 1, 21 reminds us, it says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to call him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from the sins. All this took place to fulfill the Lord had said through the prophets, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Place the hope of your life in the lights of the world. The first candle represents hope. The hope of the baby that was born in Bethlehem and who is coming again. Will you pray with me as we begin our worship together? Heavenly Father, we turn our attention to you during this Christmas season. We thank you that even during uncertain and difficult times, we can give you the hope of our lives. That tomorrow will be better than today. And as we move towards Christmas, Lord, we pray that you will move our hearts closer to you. We pray that you would prepare our hearts now for worship. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen.
graciousness. Thank you for sending your son and the uh, opportunity to be able to prepare to worship him, Lord. Thank you that you are the calm in the storm of this life right now. We are so grateful for all that you do and all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Give Jason, our pastor Jason today, the, the words to speak and uh, prepare our hearts to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Good morning. And you, this is a great morning. And for, you know, for the first time, I actually haven't said this yet to anybody. You're going to be the first ones to hear this come out of my mouth. But Merry Christmas. Thanksgiving is finally over. We can finally say Merry Christmas to people. You know, I, I'm a firm believer in only one holiday at a time. And so Thanksgiving has been is done. The turkey's been eaten. Now we can do Christmas. And maybe you guys are feeling a little bit like me, but doesn't it feel like 2020's lasted forever? Like we were never going to get to the end of 2020. We were never going to get to Christmas. But it's finally here. Now here's one thing though. I, this has been a year that we will never forget. You might not know exactly where you were when the coronavirus pandemic began. But I promise you probably remember exactly where you were when you realized it was real. So I know Michelle and I, like we kind of knew something was happening and then we went on vacation. We went to Hawaii for a week and when we got off the plane, all, we turned our phones back on and then all of a sudden we just started getting all of these like news feed messages that, uh, that things were canceled because of health concerns. And I, I realized at that point something was bigger than it normally is. But this is where it really hit me. After being on vacation for a week to come back home and needed to restock the refrigerator, the pantry, put some food back in the house. Uh, and I went to the store and the shelves were already empty. right? And not only were the shelves empty, but that very valuable product that we all love, toilet paper, was gone. right? Toilet paper was going for 99 cents a sheet on eBay. Like, can you imagine paying a dollar a square for toilet paper? And that's when I realized that this state that we've been in was real. We've gone through a crazy year. And here's what I feel like as we come into Christmas. If there's ever been a year where we need Christmas, this is the year. If there's ever been a year that we need the hope of Christ, it's this year. And that's exactly what Advent is. Advent is all about hope. Advent is a season of hope. In fact, the word Advent, it actually means to come or arrival. It implies a season of expectation, anticipation, longing. Advent looks back in celebration of the hope fulfilled in Jesus' coming, while at the same time looking forward forward to his return to call us into eternity. Advent is a time to prepare our hearts and focus our attention on a story bigger than our story. But the story of God redeeming his people with the greatest sacrifice of love. This doesn't mean just because we want to focus on maybe the, the fun and, and hope and love of the holidays, that we forget about the pain and the hardship that we've been through. We don't want to pretend that everything is normal. Because it, pretending doesn't mean that, that, that uh, the pain, the hurt goes away. Instead, what it means is admitting that even though it's been a tough year, we're going to turn our attention to understanding Emmanuel. God with us. It's a time to align ourselves with God's active presence and peace. I think this year we've been given a gift. We've been given the opportunity to see life through a new lens. 
We've been given the opportunity to prioritize our life. And that's what I hope we can do this Advent season. That we can prioritize our life with the hope of Christ. Step number one in your notes is we want to keep hope alive. And here's the thing. The Christmas story, the, the way that we normally read it, it begins with Mary and Joseph in a stable and some animals and some shepherds in a field. But the story of Christmas began much further back than that. God's people knew the promise of a Messiah. They knew what God had promised to their ancestors. But for far too long, they questioned when. When would he come? When would they be rescued? How much longer would they have to endure hardship and, in, uh, and uncertainty? Does that sound like a question we're asking right now? How much longer do we have to deal with uncertainty? God's people... We're very familiar with this question. This morning, we're going to pick up the, the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 22. And we're going to look at the characters Simeon and Anna. Beginning in verse 22, it says, When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary I uh, took him, Jesus, to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn <clears throat> is to be concentrate, uh, consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jeru Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he, uh, he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised... You may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. And to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, uh, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying, coming up to them. At that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. So we don't know a lot about these two characters. But there is something that we can see in this story. And here's what we can see. They were ready. And the reason that they were ready is because they kept hope alive. They knew the promises that God had made their ancestors. And faithfully, they waited for the fulfillment of those promises. They continued to hope in what they did not yet know, but then as soon as Jesus showed up, right, if you read that scripture as we read it, it says that they knew and they instantly started praising God and telling others around them. They didn't need angels to show up. They didn't need a burning bush. They didn't need these magical signs. Why? Because they were ready. They had been living in this hope, in this anticipation of what was to come. They were ready to rejoice, ready to celebrate, ready to infuse hope in those around them. Hope is the fuel of faith. Do you guys catch that? Hope is is the fuel of faith. Hope is that whisper of maybe. Hope is that glimmer of light in the darkness. Hope empowers possibilities. No matter what season you've been through or what season 
you're in. Guys, don't abandon hope. Hope is alive even when it seems darkest. Hope chases away the darkness and the uncertainties of, the, of our lives. In Romans chapter 8, Paul helps us understand the role of hope. Beginning in verse 24, he writes, For, for in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. All right. I, when, when you read that, it almost kind of feels like Paul turned Dr. Seuss on us. He's, he's speaking in rhyme and riddle. And, and here's what that means. In a practical moment, if my, my wife is listening right now, right, I can hope for that gift that I want for Christmas. I can hope that she's going to buy it. I can hope that she's going to wrap it. I can hope that she puts it under the tree. And I can hope that on Christmas morning, I will open that gift. And here's the trick. Once I open that gift, I don't have to hope for it anymore. Because I already have it. See, hope, you don't hope for what you already have. Hope precedes our present reality. Hope in its very, in its very nature is uncertainty. It has questions. Hope even has doubts. But hope has willingness. Hope has faithfulness to believe beyond our present circumstance. With God, there is no uncertainty. He knows our pains. He knows our struggles. He sees us right where we are because he is here right where we are. And that's our next point. He is Emmanuel, God with us, now and always. He's here to infuse us with hope, just like Simeon and Anna were able to infuse people around them with hope. God has given us his spirit to infuse us with hope. And it's in our weaknesses that the spirit helps us. His spirit helps restore hope in us by reminding us of God's faithfulness and promises. Emmanuel, the God of then, the God of now, the God of yet to come, had a message of hope for his people then, just like he has a message of hope for us this morning. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In Isaiah 43 verses 1 and 2, he says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Here's the point. Emmanuel, God with us. That every step of the process, God is with us. Right? Even when we aren't sure what our next step is, God is with us. When we're uncertain of what tomorrow holds for us, God is with us. When we feel like we're drowning in the uncertainty and hurt and pain of today, God is with us. And that's a hope that we can hold on to. A hope that's promised to us. See, hope inspires us. Romans 5, verses 2 through 5. Paul writes this, We boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I love that little part in there where it says hope does not bring us to shame 
We don't have to feel shame that we don't know what's yet to come. We don't have to feel shame that we even have some doubts. Because like we said before, the very nature of hope contains a little bit of uncertainty. Hope will not let us down. Hope will not disappoint as long as that hope is in Christ. Even through struggle, hope gives new strength to press on. Hope inspires us to see beyond where we currently are, knowing that better things lie ahead. There was a story, maybe you guys caught this uh, on social media, it made the news feed, but towards the beginning of the uh, uh, pandemic, there was a guy in England, and his name is Captain Tom. Now, Captain Tom is now known as Sir Captain Tom. And, and here's what happened. Tom, Captain Tom, decided to walk laps around his garden. And his son said, Dad, for every lap you walk around your garden, I will donate $1 to the British health care system. Now, here's the thing that you have to know about Captain Tom. Captain Tom was 100 years old. And so Captain Tom told his son, I'm going to walk 100 laps. And so he was out there in his garden with his walker walking around his garden. 100 laps. And here's what's crazy. The news began to spread. Social media started to blow up. It, what started with his son donating one dollar there in England, one pound, what would have been just a hundred pound donation to the healthcare system turned out to be forty million dollars. Captain Tom, with his walker, with one hundred laps in the garden, raised forty million dollars. For the British healthcare system. He was an inspiration. Here's the thing. Right afterwards they interviewed him. They said. Or they asked him uh, what the hardest part was. And he said the first step was the hardest. After that I got into the swing of it. And just kept going. See the first step is always the hardest. And then we just have to keep going. When we receive the promise of hope in God's word, we find new strength. When we accept the power of hope from the Holy Spirit, we find new inspiration. When we focus on the power of hope embodied in the birth, life, re uh, death, resurrection, and eternal reign of Jesus, we discover new hope in order to take that first step. And then we just keep going. It doesn't have to be a run or even a walk. It may require some assistance from a friend or a walker. But the point is we just have to keep going. This has been a difficult year. And there's been a ton of uncertainties. And we've all gone through a lot of stuff that we didn't want to go through. Here's my challenge to you this morning. Is to take a breath. To breathe in Advent. To breathe in this season of hope. Yes, those other things are still there. But our hope is in Christ. Let hope inspire you. God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that we are not pawns playing a game of life. But that we're your children. That you didn't leave us abandoned to figure out life on our own. But that you sent your son to live among us. To teach us what it meant to have a relationship with you. To how to walk in relationship with you. And to give us hope for a better tomorrow. Father, we are so thankful for the gift of Christ. I'm so thankful for this, the gift of this holiday season. And God, I, I, help me, help me to not be overwhelmed with everything going on around me. And instead, help me to just focus on you.
to reprioritize my life on you. And that my hope would be in you and you alone. God, I love you and I thank you for the many, many gifts that you've given and the ones that are still yet to come. It's in your name I pray, amen. I just want to remind you of a few announcements that next Sunday and on the 20th that our tradition service will be live here at church outside. We ask that you wear a mask and know that we're going to do everything here to follow some uh, safety protocols. But if you've been stuck at home, we want to invite you to come and do church with us out here in the parking lot. Uh, Also, we want to let you know that on December 24th, that's Christmas Eve, we're going to have our candlelight Christmas Eve service at 5 o'clock, and it's going to be an outdoor service this year. We're not going to have our midnight service. We're going to do one service at 5. We will have some heaters out there, but you're going to want to dress warm. Hopefully it's a chilly night. I I hope it is. Uh, If you are visiting us for the first time, want to invite you to go to our website cornerstonehome.org and up at the top right or down in the middle of the page there's a button that says welcome guest just click on that we want to know who you are we want to get to know you we want to send you a free gift uh we also uh we want to pray for you right next to that welcome guest button there's also a prayer link if there's anything that we can pray for you whether it's a request or a praise let us know We want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. I also want to remind you that you can give in a a couple of different ways. You can leave your your tithes and offerings here at the church in one of our donation boxes uh, inside the building. You can drop them off during the week uh, with, uh, with Alicia at the front desk. You can mail them in or you can give right through the website or through the church center app. 
Hey, I hope you guys have an amazing season planned. I hope God blows your mind with just with what's yet to come. I know I'm excited for Christmas, and I want to end you with this verse. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cornerstone, go and overflow with the hope that the Holy Spirit has instilled in you. Love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.